Hi, my name is Jeff Sackman. I run a website called gmathacks.com and I've written several GMAT textbooks including Total GMAT Math and Total GMAT Verbal. What I want to talk to you about today is a topic specific to sentence correction. In sentence correction, there's a lot of different errors that can make a sentence, one of the answer choices, wrong. You can have an incorrect verb tense, a mismatch of this number in the pronoun and the number in the noun it refers to. You can have a misplaced modifier. There's, you can probably list a couple dozen different types of errors. But some errors count more than others. And this is what I like to call a hierarchy of errors. So what I mean by that is that, frankly, some errors count for more. They're worse than others. So what you'll learn about as you study sentence correction for the GMAT is not only those fundamental errors like pronouns, verb tenses, and so on, but also you'll learn about active and passive mood, and clarity, and efficiency, and idioms. And some of those errors aren't as important as others. So it's important that we understand if we have to choose between two choices that neither of which is perfect, but only one of them can be right, we need to know which error is permissible and which error is never permissible. So I'm going to divide the three types of errors into three levels of the hierarchy. The first level is what I call technical errors. And these are the things that we usually associate with old-fashioned grammar. So, are you using the correct verb tense? Are you using the correct pronoun? Are you using it to refer to a singular and them to refer to a plural? Are you putting your modifiers in the right place? And so on. These are technical grammatical errors. If there is a grammatical error in this category in an answer choice on a GMAT sentence correction question, it is always wrong. No two ways about it. If there's a misplaced modifier, there's no way that that answer choice will be correct. Same thing with verb tenses, same thing with pronoun errors. However, these other two categories come in lower on the hierarchy. Even though these errors are important to understand, they don't trump technical errors. So the second level of the hierarchy is idioms and mood. So idioms if you've been studying GMAT sentence correction for very long, I'm sure you've heard a lot about idioms, especially if English is not your first language, idioms are tricky because they are somewhat arbitrary. Um, things like using the word less instead of fewer in certain situations, using uh, combinations like as much as, not as much then, and so on. There are thousands of these things, although only a few dozen come up very often on the GMAT, and they are important to know. Sometimes there are answer choices that are wrong because of a misused idiom. Mood fits into the same category. Mood is, you've probably heard of active voice and passive voice. That's what mood refers to. The GMAT vastly prefers the active mood, not the passive mood. So you want to say, X did something to Y, not Y had something done to them by X. So you want the subject, then the verb, then the object, not the object, the verb, then the subject. So mood is important too. There are definitely some questions where you need to identify choices using the passive mood or the passive voice to eliminate them. But this is where the hierarchy comes in. If you are down to, let's say, two answer choices, neither of them look very good, and only one of them has a mood error, so only one of them uses the passive voice, then pick the one with active. By all means, the active one will be correct over the passive one. However, let's say you are down to two answer choices where one of them uses the passive mood. So you're thinking, okay, passive voice, definitely wrong. But the other one has a technical error, like a misplaced modifier. You're looking at those last two answer choices and you're thinking, neither of these are correct. What am I going to do? I've got to pick one. And this is where the hierarchy comes in. A technical error is worse than a mood or an idiom error. So if you have to choose between those two imperfect answer choices, choose the one with a mood error, never the one with a technical error. Now the same logic extends to the third level of the hierarchy, which is basically everything else. Things like efficiency and clarity. Now when you read the explanations to sentence correction questions in GMAT guidebooks, especially the official guide, which has some great practice material, the explanations will refer to some wrong answer choices as simply being inefficient or unclear or having poor rhetorical construction. Now, all that's true. 
Some answer choices do have those mistakes, and if it comes down to two choices where one of them has an efficiency mistake and one of them doesn't, then choose the one that doesn't have the mistake. That should be pretty clear cut. But what you'll notice as the questions get harder, especially as the underlying sections of the sentence corrections get longer, almost every one of the choices isn't going to be that efficient, isn't going to be that clear isn't going to be very well constructed. So you can be in a situation where you have to choose between five choices, all of which have an error from this third tier. And that, again, is where the hierarchy is important. It's okay to have an efficiency error if those are the only choices you have. It's okay occasionally to use the passive mood if those are the only options you have. But it's never okay to have a pronoun misused or a verb tense misused and so on. So if you're in a situation where more than all of the remaining answer choices look wrong for various reasons, and I guarantee you will be in that, point, in that position at some point, first eliminate the technical errors, then eliminate the mood or idiom errors, and only then, only if you have the choice between an efficient answer choice and an inefficient answer choice, eliminate the third tier errors, but you will be in situations where the right answer choice has an efficiency error or maybe even has a passive voice mistake. As long as you're choosing errors on the lower end of this hierarchy, you'll be okay. Never choose answer choices with technical errors. That's all I've got for you today. For more verbal tips to help you through the GMAT sentence correction section and other parts of the GMAT, like I said before, check out my website, gmathacks.com, and my GMAT verbal textbook, Total GMAT Verbal. See you next time.